All right, today on Free Field Training, we're gonna be talking about police radios, portable radios like this one and how they work. Now, I just got a new APX 7000 from work to replace my old HT 1000. We're gonna talk about some of the differences and the basic concepts of how portable radios will work and some of the features that they have so that people have a better idea of how this stuff operates in the real world. So I'm gonna take you down to the table talk and let's take a little look at them. Now, uh, portable radios, let me show you my original radio here. This is an HT 1000 and this is the carry case that it had. It has a, a little 90 degree swivel on it. So what you would do is you'd put the radio in the case snap it into place and then you slide this at 90 degrees onto your belt and then it rotates free and kind of hangs there which makes it a little more comfortable to carry. Now, this is the radio itself. The battery pack is on the back. Pull the battery pack off, put the battery pack back on. That's how you get a charge so you don't have to have the radio always docked in order to keep a charge. You can just charge just the battery in the radio charger and then have two batteries and that's how we make sure that something like this will stay running through a 16 or 24 hour shift. Now these HT1000 batteries normally get about a shift, shift and a half with those in normal use where I'm at. So the function of it is pretty much like a kid's walkie talkie most of the time. This is the on off slash volume knob and then this knob here lets you change channels and you can see in between each channel there's no noise that it makes until you get to a channel that's not programmed. So I have four channels on this. I have my PD's channel that goes to our repeater and another one that's the same talk frequency but doesn't go to the repeater so it's only radio to radio and then our backup channel our tactical channel that goes to the repeater and then a direct version, a simplex version of that backup channel. And then there's an emergency button which more or less works on portable radios. And then there's this little thing here which is to screw an antenna in and then if you don't have an antenna in there, if you have it on your uh, mic clip, which I'll get to in a second, there's supposed to be a little rubber plug, but the little rubber plugs always fall out and get lost. So this is the microphone attachment so this so there's a little screw on here and then this just clips onto the side of the radio so you can clip it on clip it off if you don't want to have the microphone on it but realistically in uniform this this thing this is great it also gets your antenna a little higher up on your body gives you a little bit better of reception and what this does is just like this is a push to talk button this is also a push to talk button so you clip this to yourself and you can push the talk. I like to keep this centered up on my body like this, where I can grab it with both hands and be able to operate it. As you can see on here, there's a high low switch. What this does is regardless of where the radio is set, this allows me to lower significantly the volume or raise the volume to normal levels so that I don't have to reach down and play with a knob to change the volume level on the radio. So if I'm going to a situation where I need it to be quiet, I just flip the switch. If I want to be able to hear better, I switch it back up. It's kind of nice. There's also a bank switch on this, a little A, B, and C. We don't use that at work. We only use the four channels uh, that we have programmed into it. We're on kind of a, a weird frequency. These can't be programmed with most of the other public safety frequencies in our area. At least we don't bother with the couple that we can. And this is my new radio. This is another Motorola. This is the APX 7000. Uh, it's uh, significantly better, which it should be because it's about, ooh, 20 to 25 years younger than that last one. This is the case. This isn't the Motorola case. I was issued a Motorola case, but this is a Turtleback case. It's uh, Turtleback is a cell phone com uh, case company, and I got this. This is thinner. It has a 90 degree swivel, which means when you put this on your belt, you slide it in 90 degrees straight up and down and then rotate it and it's got little knurls on the back that kind of lock it into place. I like that. I find that the 90 degree swivel is less likely to uh, come off and fall off of your belt during strenuous physical activities like taking your belt off to go to the bathroom and then putting it back on again. This tends to stay whereas the stock Motorola one tends to not. So this is on there kind of like a, a car bra glove thing. You have to unsnap a bunch of stuff to get this off. Luckily I don't have to take this off at all on day-to-day -day use because the battery on the bottom is exposed and so I can just drop this into the dock and I, I take the battery on and off without having to take it out of the case so it just stays in the case all the time. 
This one's kind of stiff because it's new. So I'm gonna pull that off so you can see the radio itself. The APX7000 is our new system and it allows me to have a whole lot more channels, a lot more interrupt capability, and a lot more battery life. Now these have two different batteries. This is the short life battery, and the short life batteries have lasted me, I get about half charge still left when I'm done with 16 hours, afternoons and midnights, which is awesome. And then there's a longer life battery, which is just makes the radio longer. Luckily I can use the same holder for that, which is part of the reason why I really like this. I wanna get a longer life battery for it eventually, because I have a tendency to be bad about charging my radio. Who'd have thunk? So this operates a lot of the same way. It's, it's very intuitive to use compared to the older radios, but it has a lot more features. And when you're using it, you come across stuff that you really like. So the volume knob and turning it on is the same type of deal, except you don't get a beep when it comes Hammond on. Police. You get what channel you're on. So right now it's on Hammond Police Department. And the volume knob is also very stiff. So instead of having a high-low switch up here on it, uh, this stays where you put it a whole lot better than the other one did, so I haven't had any problem with it. Also, when you turn this all the way down, you can barely hear out of this microphone, so there's less need for a high-low switch with this model. Uh, the panic button still more or less works, and uh, I still more or less just don't use it. And then the channels options on here, there's a lot more of them. There's an A, B, and C bank, and they're all full. So when I change channels, the big difference with this is I don't have to look down at the radio to see what channel I'm on. Lemster Police. Here, I'll do it for you again. Hammond Police. Lemster Police. On Tuesday and Wednesday, with a localized So it tells you what channel you're on. I also have uh, the NOAA channel on this, so I can listen to the weather anytime I want. And you can switch straight to different banks. And... Fire ground gray. I can switch over Hi, to the different fire channels Lock and in. different interrupt Long channels nine. for different purposes. So up here on the display, not sure if you can see that, there's a little battery life and what channel you're on and how much signal you have going back and forth to something or another. I'm not entirely sure because I'm not a huge radio guy. Maybe somebody in the comments will be able to tell everybody what that does or what that means. The real cool feature with this is that there's a lockout. So back here, I can lock out the channel that I'm on. So if I am using my, my normal band channel, I can lock this and it won't change frequencies even if I bump this around. Monster Police. We're monitoring that area intermittently. You're going to close it. All right, so I've got it locked out. There you go. I got it locked out, and it just says control lock every time I try to change it, which means it's going to stay on that same channel uh, regardless of what I do. And then I can unlock it to flip between channels, and it'll work the way the radio is normally designed to work, how you'd expect it, where you turn this knob and you get the different channel. So that's nice that you don't end up on the wrong channel going, why is it so quiet tonight? I don't get it and then you realize you've been on the wrong frequency for, you know, four hours and everybody's been looking for you. <laughs> Especially if you don't have a terminal in your car, you suddenly figure out that you got 25 messages on your cell phone from the boss wondering where you're at. This one also has a mic attachment, so there's a, a flat, large, flat thumb screw, which is a lot easier to deal with than this little tiny itty-bitty screw on this thing. And you basically just thumb screw this off and the mic attachment comes off. You could use it like a, a normal walkie-talkie. But uh, I always prefer to have the microphone attached, so pop this on, screw it on. I'm probably just gonna leave it there pretty much forever. And then this on the side here is your push to talk. And there's no other controls on this head, but I have found that it doesn't really need other controls. This seems to work just fine the way it is. So that's Police Portable Radios. If you like content like this, don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button and all of that jazz. Uh, until next week, you guys be safe. Take care of each other. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. While you're here, why don't you go check out one of our other videos, or you can head on over to the Patreon and see how you can get your name put on the videos like these fine folks listed over here. There's also some exclusive content on Patreon that just shows you kind of behind the scenes like you're seeing now. We'll see you guys next time.